What's up everyone, Howler here. Today I am bringing you my wants to battle tag video. Um, and it'll sort of be like a recap of uh, the year that was, 2020 as well. Uh, I was tagged by two different people. First by OG Albina like three days ago, and then uh, most recently by Mario B as well. So shout out to both of you guys for tagging me and getting me involved with this. Uh, wants to battle tag phenomenon that's sweeping the nation um, but yeah so uh, this is a thing that got started by birdkeeper Toby we've got a list of questions to, to answer uh, although before we do get into the questions I want to uh, flash up this graphic uh, so this is kind of like a reflection slash recap video um, like that nature of it I uh, might as well throw in uh, like just this graphic of how the channel performed in the last year uh, gained 97 subscribers almost a hundred uh, we there's still time to make that total 100 before the end of 2020 um, but you know I'm not someone who is super wrapped up in my sub count I just try to focus on making good content, um, content that I enjoy, and not stressing out too much about uh, these numbers, but I still think it's good to uh, look at these numbers. It's not You don't want to obsess over these numbers, but looking at them at this time of year to see like how much progress you've made is still pretty valuable. Our views on the channel have basically like more than tripled. Um, almost quadrupled, uh, which is pretty crazy. Um, and we did upload 127 videos this year. That number is probably a little misleading because a lot of those videos are like Luigi Man Luigi's Mansion 3 streams that I like just threw onto YouTube. And funnily enough, my number one viewed video is just this random episode of Luigi's Mansion 3 that somehow the YouTube algorithm fell in love with. God knows how. But yeah, so episode 28 of my Luigi's Mansion 3 playthrough has 648 views, which is by far the most viewed video on my channel. Go figure. Um, anyways, that's just a, a, a funny thing uh, to, to pass along your way. So without further ado, let's get into the questions, the reason why we are here. Um, oh yeah, and Say hello to Haller, full in full face cam in his Seahawks Christmas sweater. Uh, I felt like, you know, most people were putting on random random battles in the back or whatever, but this is a change. This is not something that I do all that often. I don't have a fantastic recording space, um, but uh, this is where I sit to play my games. I'm staring, looking up at the TV right now, the TVs. Uh, if it stays, if it doesn't go, if it doesn't like freeze, it's gonna keep my face well lit. <laughs> um, if it, like, if it were to turn off, my face would look really dark. The lighting in here is not that great either. But, anyways, what is the best Pokemon of 2020? That is the first question, and my answer for that, uh, objectively speaking, I don't think you can argue with Dragapult being the best Pokemon in draft format. Uh, I'm very thankful that I got the opportunity to finally draft it in the BBR. Um, it hasn't done the best for us yet, but I mean, it's a Dragapult, it will come in clutch for us somewhere down the road. The It's amazing speed stat, it's ability to be attack on either side, it's got great abilities, great utility, like, it's, I feel very confident saying it's the best ghost type, probably, probably in, no, no, Marshadow's the best ghost type, um, that's un like you can't debate that but Dragapult is probably the second best ghost type um, yeah out of everything so yeah you see see I'm gonna have to I'm gonna do this real quick um, to make sure I stay well lit enough for the duration of this video otherwise the light would be fluctuating um, so objectively speaking Dragapult is the best co Pokemon competitively but as for my favorite Pokemon to use uh, I've obviously really enjoyed uh, Calyrex Ice Rider in the short time that I've had with it in BBL. Uh, but my number one f 
favorite Pokemon that I've used in 2020 has to go to G-Max Duraludon. Now, some of you may go, oh, why, why are you picking a G-Max Pokemon? G-Max mechanic is stupid. But I loved using G-Max Duraludon in IVL when I had it. Uh, 24 kills in 14 games played. Um, I think it's one of the better G-Max Pokemon. Like, Duraludon itself doesn't get a lot of love because of how frail it is on the special side. Like, it's not a real steel type. You can't switch it into fairies and all that. But I had a blast using it. I wish that regular Duraludon were better. Um, and it brought, it brought me to uh, a second consecutive IBL championship. So uh, I really enjoyed using it, and I also really enjoyed uh, recording the uh, how to use GMAX Duraludon video on Matt O'Shea's channel. Um, uh, that was that was one of the highlights of the year for me. So, yeah, um, don't hate me for saying that GMAX Pokemon was my favorite Pokemon to use, but that's that's my answer for that one. So, uh, question number two: the best video that I made this year. Uh, see, this is a tough one for me because the uh, as far as like diversity of type of content that I make on my channel, it's really not that diverse. I I, I don't stray from my comfort zone all that often. Um, like even this video was not hard or, or not easy for me to do. Um, I just sometimes these the, these things feel that feel like big projects to me. I like to psych myself out and like cause myself unnecessary amounts of stress when it comes to putting them together. Uh, this is why it's like this is going up three days after I was first tagged by Owen in the first place. This, this type of thing is not something that is like, okay, I can just hop in and do this right now and I'll knock it out and get it up tomorrow. It's like, no, I'm not a very spontaneous person uh, and I usually don't want to put something out there unless I've thought it out as thoroughly as possible. Um, and like I don't I don't want to put it out there if I haven't put my like 100% best effort into it. So yeah, that's kind of how I like psych myself up and wind up putting these types of videos out way later than I wanted them to be out. But um, there was one video that I could pick out that I am pretty proud of that is kind of stands out among the rest, and that would be the uh, NCL Season Seven Draft Analysis. Um, I really wanted the NCL series to be uh, to be something special. I really wanted to be able to put more effort into it. But as I just said, um, when I like these big types of projects, they psych me out. I really kind of hit a wall in terms of that series and wasn't able to finish it. Uh, I managed to get up the draft analysis and then uh, seven battle videos so far, and one of them was like. One of them was a joke. It was just kind of like a update video, basically saying that uh, I need to take a break from this series right now. So I, I still haven't forgotten about it. I may or may not get the remaining battle videos done. There should be seven more videos in the series if I find the time to complete them. Uh, but so yeah, that may come out in the future. That may be something that you see in the new year But I, I can't I honestly can't promise that it will get finished um, But I think I did a really good job in the draft analysis of uh, it, it was titled how to draft a Good Pokemon team or something like that um, and I think I did a really good job at explaining uh, in a way for that new players can understand in a way that like to help them understand what they want some of the things they want to think about when they're entering when they're when they're drafting a team of their own so from an educational standpoint I'd say that was one of the top videos um, my favorite battle that I uploaded was definitely the IBL season 7 semi-finals game against Ruppy uh, because Ruppy has been a very good friend of mine for almost almost five years now, probably over five years. Uh, he's taking a break from YouTube at the moment, um, but uh, that game was a really, really something special. A special moment that I could share with uh, a very good friend. Um, 
And yeah, I'll remember that game for the rest of my life. I truly, truly will. Um, so yeah, that was that was definitely my favorite battle to uh, upload this season. I'm gonna do that thing with the TV again to make my to make my face bright so you can see me. Uh, you don't get to see me often, so I should look good while I'm talking here. Uh, of course, typical me when I set up to record some of these videos, I want it to be like a 10-minute video, and we're we're already 10 minutes in and only answered two of the seven questions. Go figure. Um, so question number three, what can viewers expect from me in 2021? And that is honestly gonna be just kind of more of the same. Uh, I'll try, to see, once our the leagues that we're in right now wrap up, I don't really know what is, uh, like I don't know what the next league is going to be. Uh, like NCL season eight, I decided that I wasn't gonna return for another season of NCL just because once January hits, I'm gonna be swamped. I'm starting uh, an online course. Uh, I'm still gonna be working multiple jobs throughout the week as well as uh, coaching baseball and playing in the leagues that I'm already in. Plus I entered another showdown tournament that'll be starting pretty soon. It's gonna be really crazy, and I'm honestly really scared that I'm not gonna be able to handle it all. So, once these leagues end, I'll probably enjoy a small break, and then when the next opportunity comes uh, knocking, uh, we'll take it. Um, I'm not concerned about, I, I'm not really thinking that far ahead. Let's, let, let's just say, let's say that. Uh, there will be Wi-Fi leagues, I'm sure, that start up when the BBR and the BBL wrap up. Uh, and uh, I'll find one to play in. I'll probably probably wouldn't want to play in multiple uh, once these two leagues are both done. Who knows how fast they the BBR and BBL will like? Who knows what the length of their off season will be? But uh, I would definitely want to be back in probably both, definitely both of those um, uh, whenever they decide to start up again. Um, and one thing I want to continue to do uh, and like make sure that I do a better job of is keeping a regular weekly streaming schedule. Right now I have been streaming Xenoblade Chronicles on my Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv slash PlatinumHowler14. Uh, the schedule has been a little more all over the place during the holidays, but uh, usually I I've been streaming on Wednesdays, 2 o'clock Pacific time and I'll be streaming Xenoblade Chronicles until I finish my playthrough uh, of the main story, which I'm, I, I just passed 40 hours, I think, uh, recently, so there's, I'm probably not even halfway finished with the game. But once I get done with the game, there are lots of games coming out in 2021 that I'm super excited about. Uh, mainly, the three main ones are Persona 5 Strikers, which I definitely will be getting in streaming. That's going to be the coming. I think that's coming out on February 22nd. Uh, I'd be amazed with myself if I managed to finish Xenoblade before that, but I guess that would be the ultimate goal. Uh, and there's also two Shin Megami mainline Shin Megami Tensei games coming out: uh, an HD remaster of uh, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne and the brand new Shin Megami Tensei 5, both coming to the Switch. Um, and those are supposed; those are both supposed to be coming out in 2021, and those are games that I want to be streaming as well. So, uh, right, I think right now we have 84 followers on Twitch, which is about, give or take, half the amount of followers we have on YouTube. So, come, come check me out on Twitch at Twitch.tv/PlatinumHaller14. Yes, uh, it's it, it's a it's a good time. Um, so, question four. Uh, anything on YouTube that has made you feel good this year? And I have a great answer to this, I think. Uh, my answer is going to be the Grandmaster's Table, a uh, podcast by Grandmaster D-Ray, who recently hit 300 subscribers on YouTube. Congrats to him. He's just been growing like crazy. Uh, the Grandmaster's Table, unfortunately, was discontinued, and that made me really sad when... Uh, the announcement came out that uh, it had to be table, no pun intended, uh, but I totally understand D-Ray's reasoning for 
uh, having to at least pause it and I really hope that one day it comes back. But in a year with so little social interaction, the Grandmaster's Table was something that I looked forward to listening to every single week because we could really uh, like that one on that one on one conversation and it was so much better actually pause it was so much better when summer joined because I feel because like uh, summer being D-Ray's uh, wife um, summer added a much more human element to the podcast and just D-Ray summer and whoever their guest was um, they always had just such nice conversation, which was something that was really lacking from 2020. Um, I really appreciated the opportunity to learn more of what uh, the other members of our community do uh, outside of Pokemon, outside of YouTube, what they get up to in their in their everyday lives. Um, so yeah, and I also really appreciated the opportunity to be a guest, uh, like especially before they decided to can it. Uh, I'm very happy that I made it on there before then. Um, that was one of my favorite uh, videos to record as well, uh, being a guest on the Grandmaster's Table. Um, so yeah, please, if you can find it in your hearts to bring the Grandmaster's Table back at some point in 2021, I would, I would, I would be very happy. Um, as, yeah, but totally understand why it had to, uh, had to be canned for the time being. Um, so, question five. The Crown Tundra or Isle of Armor? Uh, I'm gonna say the Crown Tundra because I literally just set foot on the Isle of Armor for the first time a couple of hours ago. So I haven't really explored the entirety of the Isle of Armor. I didn't get the DLC until uh, Liv gave me the money to buy it so I could get my Calyrex Ice Rider in game. Once again, I am forever indebted to you, Liv. Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, so yeah, I definitely have to go with the Crown Tundra. I think it's... Um, and, and like, just because of all the new Pokemon that they brought back, all the, all the new uh, legendaries, uh, all the new high-tier Pokemon that you can uh, take in uh, draft leagues, and, uh, all, I, and the legendaries that also made... Uh, BBL Wi-Fi possible again. Um, for that, it has the Crown Tundra has to be uh, my favorite for sure. Um, and I, I just finished the uh, Crown Tundra, all of the, all of the Crown Tundra content. Like I finally went to the Isle of Armor to catch Moltres a little while ago. So um, I think that was pretty fun. And from what I saw, the uh, the content that was added in Crown Tundra was definitely much superior content than was added in Isle of Armor. Um, there's still, like, I haven't done the Galarian Star Tournament or whatever, but, um, yeah, I mean, that was Crown Tundra anyway, but, yeah, um, Crown Tundra, for sure, because that is the home to Ice Rider Calyrex, which is the most broken uber in, allowed in the BBL, and it is ours, haha! -ha! Okay, uh, on to the next question. Name a smaller creator that deserves more love. This was easy for me. Aquarius Z. If you are not subscribed to Aquarius, please go do so. Their content is phenomenal. I love their videos so, so much. They recently hit 100 subscribers on YouTube, and most of their videos get more views than they have subscribers. When they, they don't post regularly, but when they do, Everybody notices because the people that follow them know that Aquarius makes amazing content. Um, they're in my front office, so I am very much uh, appreciative for the, the uh, their contributions in there. They're running the, the showdown tournament that I mentioned earlier that I'm participating in. And in fact, they draft, their draft position is right before mine as fate would have it. Um, so if you're looking for uh, a really, really intelligent person to that makes videos on like like draft league tutorial type of things, you definitely want to go check them out. They're an extremely talented battler. Um, 
Like the ideas that they come up for their videos are so great. My personal favorite video that they uh, made recently, I believe it's titled How to Think About Winning Matches and Identifying Win Conditions. For new players that maybe don't understand that part of the game as much, that video is outstanding. It's really, really, really top-notch quality Draft League tutorials uh, content. Uh, you should absolutely go check them out. They just got a Switch for Christmas, uh, so you may see them uh, playing in Wi-Fi leagues uh, in the near future, which is really exciting uh, because that means that they're going to be making even more content more regularly in 2021. Fingers crossed. Um, and that will segue me into the third, or the seventh and final question of this uh, tag video. Uh, and that's going to be, I need to tag three people to uh, keep spreading the love, keep spreading the wants to battle tag. So Aquarius Z is going to be one of those people that I tag uh, because they asked me to tag them. So you're welcome. Uh, more content for you. Uh, <laughs> she's, they, they said that they needed more content to pump out. So there you go. I tagged you. Uh, go make more content. Um, Person number two that I'm going to tag is our uh, next BBR opponent, Sir Jorge the Great. Uh, Sir Jorge recently passed 200 subscribers. I've now gone on to say about people, they recently passed 300, they recently passed 200, they recently passed 100. But yes, lots of milestones have been hit in the community recently, so it's good to point them out and congratulate them on their milestones. Um, Orge's a really good guy. Um, his thumbnails are the best. You can't you can't argue that his thumbnails are the best uh, in the, in the Pokemon Draft League community. Uh, really funny guy, just um, quality dude. I don't talk to him all that much, but when I always enjoy my um, I always enjoy my conversations with him. So I'd love to hear uh, what he has to say uh, in terms of the answers to these questions and the wants of battle tag and all that. So the third person is going to be Incog M. Um, I wanted to give them a special shout out uh, in this video because of all of the help they have uh, given me over this past year in genning teams for me. Whenever the uh, bot has been down or whenever I needed a team on short notice, they are always there. They're always there. They always um, have my back, and they they I know that they really enjoy my content. I started watching his draft league content recently. He's been playing in the UPA, so uh, and he played in the IBL as well. Uh, and he he battled us on short notice. Uh, he gave us a like a mock battle when our uh, IBL quarterfinals opponent forfeited, uh, and. He actually beat us in that game because he got a little bit lucky, and I also uh, and I also misplayed. Uh, I sacked the wrong mon that eventually um, cost me the game. But he also did get kind of lucky. Uh, it was a very very uh, fun game. Uh, so yeah, he's a he, he comes up with the wildest sets. Uh, has absolutely no fear to bring special mel metal uh, at all times. <laughs> He's brought it a lot. He's brought a lot of special Mel Metal sets, but anyways. Uh, yeah, so those are the three people that I'm going to tag, and that's going to wrap it up for this video that turned out way longer than I wanted it to, as these types of things always do. So if you enjoyed this uh, Wants to Battle tag video, make sure to leave a like, uh, comment down below uh, what you're looking forward to in uh, 2021, what were your favorite moments of 2020, all of that jazz. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up with all of our awesome, we do make awesome draft league content. So yeah, we'll see you the next time. We'll see you is on New Year's Day for the BBR week six uh, team builder followed by the battle the next day. So peace out guys.